Hello, another video from the Anger Photographer. We're going to be talking, since everybody keeps asking this question, about whether you should have a prophylactic, no, I'm not referring to rubbers you stick on your wang, a prophylactic filter on the front of your uh, camera lens to protect the front element and also from moisture or from AR, AR uh, strippage of the coating, what people call multi-coating, I always refer to AR coating. I've been hearing those arguments every which way now for 20 plus years. I've heard the pros and the cons. and uh, Glass has gotten a lot superior. Most everything now is multi-coated. And I'm also going to give you recommendations on how to save you a lot of money. Um, now, I'll be the first person to praise German quality. And I have some extremely precision German firearms and some other German stuff. And God knows the Germans are great and the Swiss are great uh, for producing awesome stuff. Um... The B&W filters, they suck. Well, why do they suck? Because I've seen more broken ones of those than anything else. Well, that's a uh, invalid subjective position. I know that's what you're thinking, but nevertheless, it's the case. And another reason B&W filters suck, there's two, three reasons they suck. They're easy to break. Uh, two, their threads are way too shallow. And three, they're insanely overpriced. Hoya multi-coat filters are much better, but there's another filter I'll give you a recommendation on in a second. Then we're going to talk about cleaning filters really quick because even though I've been screwing with lenses for decades now, I also grew up in a, uh, in a uh, home family business of uh, cutting down uh, lenses for glasses. And I worked the labs in the back, casting monopolymer injections, cleaning lenses all day long. I mean, just year after year since I was 16 years old, cleaning lenses, making lenses, cutting down lenses, knowing how to keep from scratching them, etc., etc. So we're going to do a little thing about what's the best filter to buy, and also the proper way to clean your lens, especially if it's extremely dirty. Why you should never use a lens pen. You should never use a lens pen because even though you're able to blow the dust off of uh, your lens, the lens pen is not recommended because all it does is drag crud across uh, your lens. I don't care about filters. Obviously, even if it's an expensive filter, it gives a shit about scratching that. But when it comes to... Uh, your lens, your front element there, if you don't have a protective filter on it, fine, but if you plan on using a lens pin, you know, you don't do it. It drags shit across your lens. That messes with the multi-coating, what technically is the crystalline anti-reflection coating. So, um, let's quickly go over why B&W sucks. Superior German filters that are uh, extremely inferior. Extremely overpriced of that, there's no question. Number two, their threads are too shallow. And often, typically, uh, they have a pitch angle which isn't compatible for some reason with a lot of Nikkor lens, which makes no sense at all. You think the lens, uh, that the threads on this are shallow? This is nothing. B&W, for some reason, has this insane idea of sticking one and a quarter turn of threads on their filters and they're famous for falling off and of course when they fall off, boy, they break and they are fragile and they are insanely over expensive Hoya Multicoat HMC Multicoat means nothing, it's just an AR anti-reflective coating um, when it comes to expensive glass if it's a thousand dollars or more you damn well better bet I've got uh, a, a protective uh, filter on the front of the lens, just a prophylactic anti-reflective filter and uh, the obvious logic against that, and I've heard every argument now for 20 plus years, like, well, you know, more glass is bad, and of course I'm the one that was the first person to argue that fact, but in this case, if it is a, uh, it's a professionally made, like a Hoya multi-coat, or believe it or not, the newest sun packs that are... Uh, are extremely well air coated. They are not going to interfere with your picture. And if you plan on shooting outdoors, you got something to worry about. If you got a certain remember, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, use a lens hood. Nikon ships out those damn lenses with lens hoods for a fucking reason. They expect you to stick a protective filter on the front. It serves a purpose with or without the protective filter. Obviously, that's what they're shipping a lens hood for. But the other premise for it is to reduce incident angle upon a front element filter such as a UV, a multi-coated UV filter that you're going to have on the front of your expensive glass. Nikon knows this, Canon knows this. Stop arguing with me that you shouldn't have an element, a prophylaxis, a protective front element on the front of your expensive glass. Okay, I don't want to hear it. I've heard all arguments now for ages and they're all nonsense. Use it, especially if it's expensive glass. When, you know, if it's a $100 or $200 lens, I typically don't. It's no big deal. I probably got multiple copies of it. So, let's talk quickly about cleaning lenses. Um, 
The easiest way to clean a really, really dirty lens, for example, if it has sticky junk on the front of it, is people will say, well, I use this solution or that solution. No, that anti-reflective multi-coating on uh, the front of the element uh, is uh, somewhat easy to strip depending on who did it. What you want to do, and it will leave nasty streaks, what we'll remove it is take rubbing alcohol and a soft cotton cloth, make sure it's a clean one with no debris on it, and of course it will leave nasty streaks. Take it all off in circles, front and rear. Okay, whip out your distilled water, not tap water. And uh, the same way lenses are polished, extremely high quality lenses are polished in the final process of their creation, is the exact same way you clean them. I've seen so many people uh, take their filters. It doesn't matter if this is a filter or front element, this is just a cheap little non coated filter. I'm using an example. So you can imagine this is a lens, a filter it doesn't make you different. See, people do this nonsense. It's like, well, I can never get the streaks off. Two mistakes they keep making. You know, you get a gigantic box of these for a dollar. You use it once, you pitch it. You grab another one. You do it again, you pitch it. And you don't clean your lens or your filter like this. Okay, or I'll see people do this nonsense. Oh, I'll work the way outside to in or inside. You don't do that. There's one split. You're going to think this is bullshit, but I've been cleaning lenses for so many years. I assure you, this is the shit. This is the only way to do it. You clean a lens or a filter with a hypertrochoid pattern. People say, well, what's a hypertrochoid geometric pattern? Well, think of a spirograph pattern. And I'll show you a proper way to do it. You want to clean your lens, get it wet with the distilled water as I showed you in the other video. You do a hypertrochoid pattern in the center, working your way out. You get it. Uh, another Q-tip, grab another one, uh, wipe off the excess moisture so it's not actually wet. Do little circles around the edge. Then you use the other side, the dry side, and work in a hypertrochoid pattern from the outside in, just like this. Doesn't matter if this is a lens or filter, you clean it the same way. Flip it over in the filter, obviously the same way. But after you do that, remember, you see each time, new Q-tip. Make sure they're cotton, not polyester, okay? Each time, new Q-tip, which you're making is cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. As I told you, the fastest way to get the crud off is use rubbing alcohol. Don't want to use acetone, use isopropyl alcohol, because it will not strip the anti-reflection coating off your filter or your front element. It will leave nasty streaks, but it will remove that sticky, gummy crud or whatever the hell you got on the front of your front element or your filter, which you shouldn't have got there to begin with, but nevertheless. Water. Now, it might take you about 10 Q-tips to get your front element clean. It might take you typically less, depends on how dirty it is. The alcohol will leave bad streaks, but work your way inward to out in hypertrochoid patterns just like this. Toss the Q-tip, grab another one, wet it. Wet it in circles. Make sure it's damp, not wet. Okay? My light behind me apparently is haunted. It keeps popping on and off. Isn't that fascinating? Fascinating. Hypertrochoid patterns, just like this. Okay? You're going to think, well, you're just full of shit. You know I can clean a lens or I can clean a filter just like this or I can do like this. No. I've cleaned so many lenses. Trust me on this one. This is the fastest way to get r rid of streaks on your lens after you've cleaned it. Or just to clean it if it's slightly dirty. Remember to blow the dust off first. Obviously, anything you're dragging across the lens, you're dragging across the coating. This is not coated. I'm just using this as an example, okay? Don't want anything drug across your coating. Use your blower first, okay? Then you're going to remove whatever particulate crud there is with the wet end and that's why you're tossing the your q-tip. You keep reusing it, you're just dragging the crud off there. I said a giant box of these is a buck at your dollar store. Toss it, grab another, toss it, grab another one. Hypertrochoid patterns. Never wet, only damp. Hypertrochoid. Well, so what's a hypertrochoid? You keep saying that. Spirograph, okay? You know what a spirograph pattern is? I think everybody knows what that is. I think the light behind me is haunted. It's like flashing on and off in Morse code. You think I was living in a third world country or something here. That's kind of spooky, isn't it? The house might be haunted. Just like this. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you something that you are going to think is batshit insane. I've been telling this pe to people now for ages. Let me see if I can screw my light bulb on telling you this. I talked about putting a... First, let's talk about someone sells a lens. They want to change the, uh, the filter on their uh, camera lens. And my god, I have seen a lot of this. 
they end up almost destroying the lens trying to get the filter off the front of their fucking lens. I have to cuss now because I've seen this so much and it destroys lenses. It destroys it. They buy this dry filter with these dry threads and they screw it on their dry filter threads on their lens. It sits there for... You know, I sit there for a year or two, maybe six months, you know, some moisture, they haul the lens out in the condensation. Just the tiniest little bit of rust develops on these threads because they're dry and you will not get that bitch off. I have seen so many extremely expensive lenses that were just, they were just shit wrecked. Or people had to take pliers and they end up causing damage because they couldn't, I can't get the filter off, I don't know what happened. No, they didn't misthread it. They didn't put grease on the thread. People think, what? What the fuck are you talking about? Putting grease on a uh, on the thread of your filter? Are you crazy? That could get on the front. Listen, everybody that's told me that, I say, have you ever taken a lens apart? And nobody really has. The people that can actually repair lenses or do that are very, very few. Like maybe one photographer in a million knows how to take a lens apart and fix it. I tell you what, if you got an old shit broken lens that you know is broken, unscrew the back of that bitch on the bayonet mount and take a look in that helicoid coil on your manual lens. There is a fuckload of grease on the inside of that. Why do you think the action on focus is so smooth on that Nikkor lens or the Sigma? There is a crap load of grease already on the inside of your lens for that smooth action. There is a crap load of grease on the little bumps for the f-stop ring. On those older AI lenses. That's where the haze comes from. That's why you should never store a lens in a hot climate. What happens is it particularizes the grease inside that focus ring there. And what it does is it gets on your elements. And that's what causes haze on the inside of your lenses. That's why it's not only important to store your lenses in a cool dry place. But rather, I don't mean it's like freezer cold. But store it in a cold dry place. Preferably in like a pelican case with some desiccant in it. So anybody out there that's going to tell me or have a hissy fit with me telling you this, you're full of shit, okay? Yes, and here we go. This is some Teflon grease. It's called Tetra grease. You, there's other varieties of... Uh, this will never mar up an air coating, but if you do it properly, you're never even going to get it near your front element. It's a Teflon-based grease. One tube of this would last you a hundred lifetimes. One tube of this lasts me just a few months. What you do is right before you mount the, your filter, your prophylactic, your protective front... Uh, filter on the front of your glass, what you do is you just put a tiny smear on your finger. Tiny! And then what you do is just be a tiny bump of that Teflon grease. You'll dot it on the lens. You'll go around a quarter. Dot it. Dot it. Dot it. Make sure it's always on the outside of the filter. Nowhere, it's, nowhere in here where it can particularize onto your front element. And then what you do is with your other finger is you smear it all along the threads. We're not talking, we're talking about the tiny smear and only a portion of that tiny smear applied to the filter threads of your lens. Now, if you think I'm full of bullshit, you will never have a problem getting your filter off. I have seen so many hundreds of lenses where the filter was utterly seized. Seized on the front of that expensive lens. They cannot get it off. I even recently tried to buy a lens. The guy said, well, I want this filter. He broke the front broke the glass on the filter, and was whipping the pliers out and basically wrecked the lens. He didn't really wreck it, but he, he, he did it some serious damage because he screwed this bitch filter on the front of his expensive uh, lens the same way every other dickhead out there does. You don't do that. People think, well, I can't put lubricant. Well, you're not talking about putting oil on. I'm talking about a Teflon-based grease. And as I just got done telling, if you open up those lenses, there is a buttload of grease. There is more grease on the inside of your brand new Nikkor lens than there is personal lubricant in a whorehouse. Okay? So don't tell me that you shouldn't put grease on the threads of your filter because the inside of your lens has got a shitload of grease in it already. Okay? I'm sorry I had to cuss there, but I have had people... Why are you talking about putting grease on your filter threads? That's not good because it could get on your front element and that could damage... Shut up! You don't know what you're talking about, okay? Don't know what you're talking about. Not talking about oil, talking about a Teflon-based grease. You can get this for a tube of it for like uh, four bucks. 
course, you, you know, well, you're not collecting lenses. You're always screwing filters on and off, dozens and dozens of lenses. You may not need this, but uh, anyway, that's what it is, the Teflon-based uh, grease. It doesn't migrate. Oil migrates means it seeps, it flows. We're not talking about oil here, okay? We're talking about grease. The same sort of professional grease that is all inside of that lens. I repaired two lenses in the past four days. And one of them had so much grease in there, I was like, holy shit. You could have had an orgy with all the lubrication on the inside of that 50 millimeter helicoid barrel. Absolutely amazing. Okay, no acetone. So remember, if you got some gummy shit on your filter, use alcohol, rubbing alcohol, clean cloth, switch over the clean cloth, rubbing alcohol, it'll leave really nasty streaks, but you got the gummy shit off, okay? Distilled water, Q-tips, dampen. Even this is a front element. Doesn't matter if it's a filter, front element. Don't clean this way, don't clean this way. Clean like this. Working your way inside to out, and then outside to in. I'm obviously going very fast here, but you get the idea. That's a surefire way to remove the streaks, the best, uh, easiest uh, way to remove the streaks off your filter. And as far as protective elements on your front glass, I've already told you, I've been hearing it for 20 years now, actually or more than 20 years, and I won't hear any more arguments about it. I am not producing any info. I've done plenty of testing, and you can go out there and check the test yourself. Done plenty of testing with and without the filters, okay? No difference. You got a lens hood for a reason. If you're a smart photographer and you think you got an angle of incidence issue with your front filter, even if it's a multi coat, throw the lens hood on there, okay? Or screw it off. It's a protective filter for a reason. You think you need to screw it off? Screw it off. And when you're done, screw it back on at the end of the day, okay? It's there for protection. If it's a multi coat filter. Now, I'm going to tell you about what's the best filter to buy. Sunpack used to be famous for making shit filters, but that was ages ago. They've since actually improved things. There's only two filters I recommend now. There's actually a third, but it's insanely expensive. There's just no reason whatsoever to buy it. I'm not going to recommend a $120 filter to you peeps out there when you can get the exact same thing. Far, far cheaper. It doesn't cause any distortion in light transmission to your expensive, through your expensive lens to your sensor in the back of your camera, okay? Hoya Multicoat, number one recommendation. Stay away from B&W. They're overpriced, they're fragile, and they have shallow threads, and they're famous for falling off. Gotta grease your threads. There is no argument about this. When it comes to this topic, I am God, and there is no second. I've got the logic and the evidence to stand behind that, and plenty of decades of experience to stand behind that. I don't give a shit what you think. There's already a ton of grease in your lens already, okay? And we're talking about grease, not oil. If you don't know the difference, it's time to go back to school. Um, Sunpack has started making actually extremely well multi-coated uh, uh, filters, and believe it or not, as much as I hate the store, they're sold under the professional name of Platinum at Best Buy, believe it or not. You know, you know, baby, you know, baby, I have got every filter out there the expensive stuff and the cheap stuff I've handled it all for years I'm not being a cheapskate I'm trying to save you money but they're labeled as platinum and they're in silver and black silver and dark gray boxes are sold at Best Buy so if you want a protective filter you can see it when you hold it and this isn't one of them it has a greenish tint there's a crystalline anti-reflective coating on the filter buy one of those for I think they're eighteen dollars Okay. It is actually made better than a, an equivalent B&W filter, which will run you $100, doesn't have enough threads to hold onto the front of your lens properly, and is overpriced. You could take that as gospel, or you can tell me you know, you're full of shit. I don't care, but I'm telling you, I, I've, I've owned and owned all the expensive shit, and I've experimented with all the other stuff, and uh, that's it. And if, when it comes to the grease... On the filter threads, I've told you the reason why. You know, my word is gospel on that. There is no argument. I don't care what you say. Never going to change it, and I've got the logic to back it up, and you don't. I people say, what are you talking about putting grease on your filter? That's just crazy. No, it is not crazy, and I've told you why it's not crazy. We're going to go over some other videos tonight. i got a bunch of videos to crank out and some other recommendations, and we'll be talking about various other things. And uh, if I repeated myself too much, then I'm obviously at fault, but there's no reason to criticize me too much. You know, you can always click somewhere else if you don't like it. Um, if you like the video, you can always make a donation. If not, you don't have to. I'm obviously, I'm doing this to help you. I'm not, I'm not getting richer. <laughs>
I'm not getting rich off these videos or something. Um, I literally am. I mean, original intent of making these videos is just to be helpful. You know, I got tired of seeing people, well, that's the expensive shit. I'm going to buy that. I'm going to lust after that. I'm going to save all my pennies and buy that expensive shit because expensive shit's better. And everybody knows if it's expensive, it's better. Wrong. Better is better. Just because it's more expensive doesn't mean shit. There are a hundred million assholes out there wringing their hands, thinking about how they can take inferior shit, stick a high price tag on it, and convince you that it's better. Well, we're going to make it expensive. We're going to talk it up, and people will buy it because they think it's awesome. Ah! I'm here to save you money. I really am. That was my whole intent and purpose. More videos to come. Send me recommendations. Tell me to go fuck myself. Make a donation. Whatever you want. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever paddles your canoe. Uh, catch you later. Another video.